fabulous. 6.05, I will call this meeting to order. Um, we have ensured a quorum. We do have six uh, members present. Meeting purpose, um, I'm actually going to amend this a bit. It's uh, financial monitoring and negotiations. Facilities, um, we're pushing to next month's meeting so that we can have um, the, uh, better grasp. Bob and Wes can have a better grasp on, on uh, the information that they're giving us. Um, does anyone have any updates or edits to the agenda before we dive in? This is your one and only chance. <laughs> Great. Um, okay, look at us being so on time, 6.05. Public comment. I'm going to go ahead and read the preamble. Uh, the board welcomes comments but is not able to take any action on them other than to direct the public to the appropriate staff member or to the complaint procedure. Comments are limited to three minutes per speaker. Time may not be ceded to another speaker. Comments are to be addressed to me, the board chair, or the board as a whole, not to any individual on the board, on the staff, or in the public. <clears throat> Excuse me. Please raise your hand and wait to speak until you are asked to. Please identify yourself with your first and last name and your town of residence. Please refrain from restating comments that have already been shared. However, you can express agreement with those comments. Order and decorum shall be observed by everyone. Shouting and profanity are prohibited. As the board chair, I will maintain the order and decorum of the meeting. That said, if there are any members of the public that would like to make a comment, <laughs> not to shine a spotlight, uh, you're welcome to do so. OK, thank you. Um, I'm Curtis Corrin, and I'm from Brookfield. And um, I've, been, I've lived here around 40 years, and my son went to Brookfield. And um, it recently, recently, I discovered that the school, the supervisory union, I think, or maybe the supervisor, has um, said that the, the voting for the, for the presidential election should move out of the school and into the church nearby. And I found this really surprising and, and upsetting a little bit, because um, I've been voting there since for 40 years. It's always been one of the highlights of voting is going to the school and having all the kids see what we're doing. It's kind of a civic lesson. Um, they see their whole community coming in and out all day. It's an exciting day. And um, I understood that um, some people were anecdotal evidence, were not um, pleased about this, would, would like it to be returned or remain in the school. So it's just a little thing, but I, I'm on the select board also. And um, I, I told them about this on my, our meeting Monday night. And I said, I'm not asking you for you know, any um, approval. I just want you to know that I'm thinking of going, because I feel important. I feel it's important. And they said, you speak for us. So the, I know the select board is behind the idea of having the, the voting um, remain in, in, in the school. And, and um, that's, I just want to say that. That's all. Thank you. OK. I appreciate your comment. So and whatever consideration you'd like to give it or not or whatever. But I love voting at the school. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for joining us. OK. So then I will go, I think, because I don't want to. I won't take it personally. You're welcome to stay. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Here's Thank this you all important signage. Yeah, that's just to make sure we get your name right. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Okay. Have a good meeting. I appreciate that. I love Thanks. the Good to see you. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, seeing no one online, no one in the room. Um, I'm going to move on and just uh, give a, a, a formal, our, our last meeting was a special meeting um, in which we filled the vacant seat uh, from Braintree. And I just wanted to take a moment in the kind of regular public meeting to officially welcome Rachel Fish to our board. Um, we're so appreciative that you stepped up and shared as much as you did about yourself um, and, and your kind of hopes and, and goals for being a part of um, this group. So thank you. Thank you. I'm really excited to be here. 
Um, and I brought this bling-filled water glass just in your honor. I'm it's all I could find. <laughs> a visual party for everyone as we move to the agenda. Um, let's see. Moving on. Uh, approval of the annual agenda. So this is one we kind of changed the format. Um, it was in your packets last time. Um, I did, there was one suggestion that I move the um, visits uh, from tonight is Robin, um, often from principals to uh, ends monitoring. It really kind of, Ann and I were talking in the agenda meeting, it kind of bridges between ownership linkage and ends monitoring, but um, applies to both. So uh, that's the one edit I made. Um, and also just in terms of EL monitoring, uh, this is the uh, kind of map will follow in a standard year, but we've decided to consider this year kind of a, let's, you know, go slowly, figure it out together, um, and get some time under Michael's belt before he's, you know, looking back on how many days is it now? <laughs> I, what, well, let's see, we must be about 60, 70, the, the historical knowledge you now have. There we are. <laughs> um, so anyway, this is this is the general map that, that we'll use, and we will, um, every year, we do need to approve the annual agenda. Does anyone have any comments, questions, concerns? Then I will entertain a motion to accept the annual agenda as presented in our packets. So moved. Thank I'll you, second. Thank you, Sarah. Further discussion? All those in favor, please audibly and raise your hand. Aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions. Thank you. Passes unanimously. Um, and, and I decided that, that uh, in terms of subcommittees, you know, we do want to have a standing slot reserved for subcommittee report outs, but for tonight, it will be a reminder for subcommittees to meet. Um, your meeting must be warned, uh, 48 hours at least. Um, that's for a regular meeting. Um, and the agenda can be very simple. It can read opening, public comment, discuss ends policy, closing. It can be that simple, but there does need to be an agenda and minutes taken and then set to cut. Can we have a reminder of the subcommittees that are currently standing? Standing, absolutely. Uh, we have ownership linkage, um, and that is Sam, Ryan, and... It had been Katya. It had been Katya, and we decided that that was fine for a subcommittee that it remained the two members. Great. Um, the ENDS uh, committee is myself, Rachel, Emil, and Anne. I'm going to have to specify Rachel. Just Rachel now. Sorry, oh. yes. <laughs> Rachel, yes. Thank you. Yep. Um, I'm not going to put you on the spot tonight, Rachel Fish, uh, in terms of joining a subcommittee, but I will go through what possible options are. And um, they're, they're all represented right now, so you're not gonna, we're not going to twist your arm or force your hand or anything else with an appendage. Um, to serve on one. Um, other subcommittees, just as we're, as we're going over them, the professional staff negotiation uh, is myself, Sarah, and Emil. Thank you. Um, and support staff is Anne. Sam? Nope. Anne. I think Kacho is on that one. Uh, support staff, Ann, and Ryan, and Rachel. Ryan and, and Rachel. Yes. Okay. Oh, right. Rachel Gatiss. We have two yes. Rachels now. <laughs> Got to remember that. Uh, right. Okay, so please. Um, and Thank you. Thank you, Sam and Ann are on the RTCC advisory board. That did meet just prior to Thanks, Sam. Um, okay, board education. Michael, do you want to report out on the VSBA regional meeting? 
No, that was going to be me. Anne, sorry. Would you like to report out? <laughs> I'm so sorry. On the BSBA regional meeting. So the regional meeting is um, is for us. It's kind of an interesting group because we are grouped with a bunch of districts north of here. Um, uh, and in that meeting, um, each region nominates um, members to be on the VSBA board. Um, and so we did that. But then the second part of the meeting, the, the meat of the meeting, was um, the uh, Agency of Education went over the um, new, uh, what are they called? DQS's district quality standards. Am I? Do I? Did I get it right? <laughs> All these acronyms. Yep. I'm always struggling a little bit. Uh, yeah. So they went over the district quality standards, which are basically going to be the governance standards that are going to be in place, and that the agency is going to sort of expect districts to show that we're in compliance, that we're proficient in those. Um, quality standards um, and so there'll be a process for that um, just f for our board one of the nice things that they went over last year in that policy governance training was uh, uh, Debbie went through policy governance and how it lines up with those district quality standards and pretty much if we're doing our policies correctly, we're basically meeting all of those district quality standards. So um, there were a few districts that were a little, getting a little nervous about, you know, how are, you know, what are you going to do? And, um, but uh, the, they're very, they're also pretty general and they're, I mean, if a district is not doing those, you know, I have concerns for the state of Vermont and, and the state of education for, for Vermont kids if, if they aren't doing them. So they didn't seem, it didn't seem extravagant. So that was the gist of the meeting. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for attending. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So do you want to have any questions for Anne? When will we see those? Uh, they go into effect July 1 uh, of 2025, and I believe you can, you might be able to find them on the AOE website. Uh, can you see them on there already? What's that, the upcoming? The district quality standards. The educational quality standards are actually in effect July 1st, 2025, the new ones. There have always been educational quality standards. No, 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 for the district, the, the added district quality standards. I don't know if they've added them into the educational quality standards yet. Um, so they, I, I actually just shared out um, today, not with the board, but I'm happy to share it with the board some information on what that's going to look like for next year. Is that what that's? Thank you. Right. I just sent them. The district quality standards, yeah. Mm -hmm. Are they there? Oh. Are they up on the website? Yep. Mm -hmm. Send you all a link to it. Great. Yeah. And am I understanding things correctly from the Agency of Education that they're also re sort of revising or updating the educational quality standards? Yes. That will and also go into effect for, yeah. for July 1, yes. 2025. So also, yeah. thank you. I um, was talking about something slightly different, but they're interwoven and connected. Right, but right, yes. right. But just so Michael's sending the district quality standards now. But yes, the yeah. educational quality standards have been updated to include ethnic um, studies right. across the curriculum. Um, so we're already looking into both of these things and making sure that we're we're compliant before they become um, effective in force. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the VSBA annual conference. Um, everyone, every board member is is uh, welcome to attend. Um, I'm sure there's a, 
a deadline. I have it up here in terms of the, the schedule of the um, days, but I I know there must be a deadline for getting who for you to register us. I assume that you're registering us. I'm sorry to make that assumption if that's wrong. Um, it is October 24th and 25th. That's a Thursday and Friday. Um, Thursday, it looks like it's for, yeah. That's for everyone. It's just two to four. It's a pre-conference workshop, so they've they've really made it a one-day um, conference. But there is a. I'll be going to that first one, that first day, um, mm -hmm. and then hopefully to the second day. Um, but if there's a chance, you can come on Friday if you can clear your schedule. Um, it's not only informative and educational. Um, you're around other board members mm -hmm. from other districts that are dealing with similar, maybe not even similar, but there's there's something validating and comforting about it, to be quite honest. Mm -hmm. um, so please look at your calendars and see if that's a possibility. I believe our next meeting is what, before then? Yeah, yeah. October 9th. Yeah. Um, so we may even have until next meeting. I can't imagine the deadline is. So they give a discount um, if we're a team of four or more, mm -hmm. and everyone can register as individuals, and the discounted price will be calculated on the invoice. Oh, there's no payment when we that's right register. So Great. I can share the link, and people can review it. That would be really helpful. So everyone kind of has it at the top of their inbox. Happy to do it. Um, and I think you're planning on going. I'm planning on going. Yeah. Heather, you're planning on going. Oh yes. And Mike. So yep. we've got our four. We've got our discount. <laughs> but don't let that stop you. Let's be a bigger team. Well, the discount grows with every person who... Oh, yeah. Do your district a favor. <laughs> Save some money. Um, no, I really do encourage it. So yes. please. Look it's lovely. Computers. It's nice. Um, and, and we learn a lot. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And, and register yourself. Thank you. Um, this is the report out from Michael that I thinking about policy governance training opportunities and some you've already attended and I shared with you in your board packet the last two pages of the board of the board packet so the written version of this but it's great we would like to see it that way so there's really two opportunities one is an asynchronous opportunity it is called the policy governance board accelerator it is sponsored by the Vermont School Boards Association and is round, uh, coordinated with uh, I think Brown Dog uh, Consulting. Mm -hmm. And this is a program that is asynchronous and broken up into modules so that we can, we can do this on our own pace. Um, one of the things that uh, they talked to Anne and Hannah about was you have on your board agenda every month some board education. And we could take this and look at a module each month so that it's not a big training that you have to sit down and spend four or five hours all at, all at one time. If we did one module each month, and came and talked about the modules as a group, it would give us a fairly good base of policy governance and understanding, you know, what the what the ten principles of policy governance are. Um, you know, and I think that basically what I read into this was it looked like each module uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of a half an hour. And so not even like a huge each month, not a not a huge commitment. But again, you can do it at your own you can do it at your own pace. We've done this before. Yes. Some of us have. Right. But we have right. new board Absolutely. members who haven't done it yet. Right. Right. But for the people who one shot, right? For the But for people who have done it. Right. Was it helpful? Did it did it help our practice? Uh, it was a 101 at the time. Yeah. Um, I'm never against refreshing. Um, and I think it is important to keep in mind that it's a different group now 
a oh, different sure. dynamic, a kind of now. No, I'm, I'm not saying it's a, it's a bad thing. Yeah. Just, do you Reflect, we, reflecting that we this is something that we've tried, so we have some some people have some experience with this, mm -hmm. and we should be engaging with things that we find helpful. Mm -hmm. And so, what hopefully, you hopefully feel the people. Um, I don't remember a lot about it, honestly. I remember doing the brown brown dog consulting pieces. I remember um, working through the quizzes. And that was leading into our retreat. Was right. So the way it worked, and but I think this is going to be a little bit different because the way, it, remember, we did it during COVID. So Susan is in Canada, so she couldn't cross the border. So we had to do, we had her, um, so the way it's set up, and I don't know if it is the same with with the VSBA's contract with Susan, but the way it was set up was we all were sort of, we had a we had like three months to go through all of the, the, the modules. And then I think each individual also got a half hour consult with Susan. It was remote where you could ask her questions. And then we it culminated with uh, with her sort of working with the whole board. We were all on computers, right? She um, was on and she was on the there. screen. I don't remember the individual console. Yeah, I, I think I think. And so in my conversation with Debbie, I don't think that there was an individual. Console. Oh, there isn't an individual console. I don't know that, and I think that the other thing that we can do is there's some other resources that are potentially available there. My thinking on this was just if this is something that the board is interested in and it's been long enough that you know, you've got enough of a change in people understanding policy governance. At a minimum, I'm going to do the, so these are two things that I discovered as I'm getting ready to be able to, to facilitate. So there is no question in my mind that I am signing up for the accelerator and uh, the more people that sign up, there are discounts as well. So it's an opportunity, and if people wanted to do it in a way, if you as a board decided that it was worthy of your time from an education standpoint to do it, it seemed like it was a, it seemed like it was a low, low risk, didn't require you to be anywhere different than where you normally are once a month, and to tackle it along, the, along that pace. Uh, and Debbie, is the person at the VSBA who's in charge of this loved the idea of spreading it out over the over the whole year thought that it would be would be valuable so uh, there isn't that same timeline um, the other piece that I am definitely signing up for is the maintenance program which uh, Born Southwest participated in last year this is the one where you spend a half a day uh, and it's coming up uh, September. You spend a half a day um, in a face-to-face -face training, and then there is um, remote trainings that happen throughout the rest of throughout the rest of the year. Um, so it seems to be like it was a more of a it's more of a commitment, right? You've got to you've got to line up a whole half a day. I think it's pretty sure it's on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. And September twenty eighth is a Saturday. It's yes. a snow. And then uh, and then you have to be ready to go in and participate to, and to participate asynchronously. I appreciated that I was invited to participate in that. Turned out that almost every single one of those trainings happened when I was at a board meeting at Grand Isle Supervisory Meeting. <laughs> so I don't know how well they were attended and how that worked out. This one seemed like maybe this is something that you're interested in if you are we could sign up again or maybe this is one where we do the we focus in on the accelerator and tune ourselves up in policy governance and that sets us up for the maintenance program next year or maybe there's some sort of mix of different people doing these things regardless i'll be signing myself up for that 
And the third piece that I'd be signing myself up for is uh, working with Jeannie Collins directly um, and having her essentially mentor uh, me and could mentor other people and put a contract in place for her to uh, help make sure that I'm moving through policy governance and understanding policy governance in a way that helps us uh, support the accomplishment of our ends within our executive limitations. Sam, I don't know if you saw either of us nodding our heads, but yes, it was in the email packet. It's the last two pages, what we're referring to. <coughs> there we go. So those are the two things. I, I mean, really, I think for you to consider, is this something you want to do? Uh, I've told the VSBA that uh, I was meeting with the board today and that I would be signing up next week in the early part of the week. So I think um, now Kyle had sent out a kind of uh, budget line update before the last meeting, I think, or right after the last meeting. Um, so we do have training monies available. Um, it's more about if people <clears throat> feel it would be useful for them. Um, and then, you know, there is a discount the, the more people there are. Unfortunately, I think that the maintenance program would be especially helpful for me. Um, oh, uh, but I can't do Saturdays. Um, that's one, one. That's just the half day. And they record it. So they recorded it the last time, too. Mm -hmm. And then the addition to the maintenance is then you have a, a monthly uh, Zoom. Virtual but it's drop. Zoom, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, I don't know. <laughs> you don't have to go anywhere. You, know, you can just like pop onto the computer in your sweatpants and, and, uh, and, it, and it's, um, you can ask questions that are pertinent to this is something that our district is struggling with right now, or what do other districts do with, you know, s such and such. Um, so it, I, I think everybody still also has access to the videos of last year's program because um, it turned out some, some, oh, we found out it was one of those things where once you paid for three people, then all the rest of the board was like, they were covered. So we ended up yep. having everybody do it. So everybody got emailed those recordings so you can, you have access to those. So I don't know if people want to go back and, and look at one or whatever and see if it's, you know, I attended. I I I found that very helpful, um, but I'd already I I went down to Georgia and had a Carver training with the people who started or the guy who invented policy governance. So I I and then we did the accelerator. So I I don't feel like I in particular need the the accelerator, because um, that's sort of like, it gives you that, that baseline. Um, although if the whole board were doing it and we used it as a, as a education piece every month, I'd be more than willing to do it. Um, well, let me put this out there then. Um, because that's interesting, you're using it as, you know, the education part of our meeting and our annual agenda. Um, <clears throat> we have, three relatively new board members, Ryan, Emil, and Rachel Fish. Um, and I wonder if, I don't want to put you on the spot right now, but if you could give some thought in the next day or two, um, if you would be interested in the accelerator, which is that kind of baseline 101, um, and whatever that module is, and if you're doing it monthly, <clears throat> The others of us, I hope, would be able to hearken back or go through our notes um, and participate in a discussion about that topic um, without having signed up. 
so that we could still use it as a refresher for those who've done it and, and a, a kind of first read um, for the new mm -hmm. board members and still follow that schedule. So I, I wanted to add one. So Jeannie, um, she was involved with the first run through of that PG maintenance program. She also told me she is now hired by the VSBA. She just went through a training with Susan out of Canada and she would also do a full board training. It would be, a, she would require that it be a day long, but it could be like, she calls it P, uh, policy governance 101 and the whole board could do it one day uh, and it's $2,000 plus materials. So that's another, that, that could be a third option if we all want to at least be together doing something, but it would be on a, it would have to be a, it would be a full day. So either on a weekend day or people have to get a day off from work, which, yeah, that you know, is, that, uh, that may not work On a personal folks. level, that's yeah. not doable. Yeah. I, so speaking as someone who is new to I think the accelerator course, something to just give me a foundation would be extremely helpful. Um, I also like I can you sign know. you up, Emil. Great. Okay. <laughs> and on, yeah, I was just gonna say, I'm on the same page. Like I feel like I'm just learning everything all at once and that would be helpful. Yeah. Awesome. That's two. That's two Plus and two three. Um, Ryan, I can email tonight um, and see if he's interested. Are any other board Sam, members? did you do it? No, so Sam might be interested it too. Seems like maybe it should be all or nothing. I, I'll do it. Like, so everybody's getting the same. It's kind of all on the same yes. page again and yes. kind of re. Because I can't, I, I, if like three or four people do it and then we're having a discussion about it. It's going to be a pretty lopsided discussion mm -hmm. because I've got some principles down, but I'm not going to be able to remember exactly what was covered in a particular lesson as yeah. we review that as our education. So in that case, eight, nine, ten, um, I can do this math. It would be three thousand dollars for for ten people. And I'll talk to the DSBA and say, hey, look. I've got even more people than you could imagine. So what kind of discount do you want to give us for 10? Thank you. Yeah, that might be worth it. What if other people think about Rachel's, Rachel games? Yeah, I'm, I don't have to decide for everyone. I'm just, I think it's a great idea. Thank you. So this kind of um, using funds from um, that budget line, I think we should take a vote, personally. Sure. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we want to set a limit of the of the three. If we want to approve, if they don't want to give us a discount for ten people because they've set their price, um, then we should set that limit. I think there should be a dollar amount there. But in this moment, I will entertain a motion um, to ask first ask uh, Mike to to register us all for the accelerator. Um, and to set the limit what we will spend. Do we have a record of what we spent before? Because I'm the sure whole board did it before. Well, and remember that that money is basically <coughs> there for us to get our well, training. To be yes, to be clear, there's, there's a budget line that every year there's a budget line for board education. Mm -hmm. And is it, is it 10,000? It's 10,000, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's never, it hasn't changed since I've been on the board. That's, what else is that money everything. used for? For the, the, the conference that's coming up on October 24th and 25th. And if we do a half day or day long and we want some food, we can use it. Mm -hmm. Do people feel like we need to have further discussion before moving to do this? Um, what is required? Well, there's a requ there's an education requirement, right? Mm -hmm. For the chair. For the, For the chair. chair. 
And the I thought it was one hour for everyone and eight hours for the chair and the superintendent together. So uh -huh. there's no there's no requirement for everyone else. It may be one hour. No, but and our policies also say as board members are one of our one of the things that we need to do is to stay up up to speed and understand how to govern. So that is, even that in is, Paul, that is, in our like policy. that is an, an ongoing thing. And right, we're all right, doing that right. all the time, every right. every month. Right. So right, but I mean we've got it right in policy, so it's not like we're um, being you know, extra this being is, extravagant? We're being extravagant. We've we've got in policy that we are to keep ourselves up to speed so that we're governing well. And to govern well, we've got to be keeping up with, with training and understanding what we're doing and improving on what we're doing. So seems seems like a good use of money. And we I don't think we've ever spent the entire ten thousand. I mean, and we used to when Brent was superintendent, we flew down to Georgia and spent a weekend Oops. getting getting yeah. training by what by John and Miriam Carver. So it sounds like maybe you want to make a motion. Sure, I'll, I'll move <laughs> that we uh, <laughs> spend the, whatever it takes to be able to have all ten of us do the. Uh, please set a limit. Accelerator. We're, I'm not the three thousand. What it is takes. it? Three thousand. <laughs> yeah. Three thousand uh, dollars to to pay for the accelerator program. Great. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Emil. Further discussion. All those in favor, please audibly uh, say aye and raise your hand. Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Great. Thank you. We got there. We got there. Um, okay. We're going to move on to monitoring the organization. Robin, thank you so much for being here. Absolutely. We always try to put guests at the top and then we start babbling. So <laughs> thank you for your patience. No um, and please take it away. Um, well, in speaking to Michael, it sounded like he wanted to talk a little bit about how we ended the year last year. Is that my understanding? Um, well, as you saw, we financially did very well, um, ending the year with around a $2 million surplus. Um, in reviewing the expenditures from last year, um, a big chunk of that money was special ed. We did not spend almost 800000 of what we had budgeted on special ed. Uh, a bunch of different factors. I mean, throughout, as all of you know, the last few years it's been tough to find personnel, to keep personnel. Um, so in the regular budget as well as special ed, those we, special ed especially, um, had a hard time hanging on to paras, keeping teachers. So there, it was. We had quite a bit of turn about, turnaround last year. Um, in, in the instructional budget, uh, we um, saved some money on health insurance. It seems like the last few years we've had turnover. Um, we've been hiring in uh, less experienced, younger people. So we tend to save some money in salary and benefits. That will catch up with us in the next couple years as, as, as long as they stay. Um, so just, just to kind of give you a background, when I start, when I budget, so we'll be starting the budget process in a couple weeks. Um, what I use for my baseline is current staff that we currently have and all of their benefits. So that's, that's my baseline. So we've been fortunate the last few years to have surpluses in both salary and benefits. Um, ESSER funds have been there to help supplement a lot of some positions, also supplement supplies, equipment that the schools have needed. Um, I think another area I can highlight is guidance. We were unable to hire a guidance person for the Brookfield School last year. Um, Braintree brought someone in in April. Um, so there was 
again, just positions that we weren't able to fill. Um, the central off or uh, the administration as far as principals, we saved a little bit in salary and benefits there. We had a change, Brookfield principal and the RES assistant principal. So it's always just a lot of little things like that. Um, transportation, uh, we had implemented uh, to, try to, uh, to try to do an after school uh, transportation at the high school. Um, and we spent far less than we had budgeted for there. Um, I don't know in talking to Lisa if that's going to continue. This, you know, we thought if we offered it, we would get more students interested in staying after school for practice. And so, and it, it was a day to day call, you know, do we have enough kids to run the bus? So, yeah. So that was a pretty big savings there. She did just send out a letter of, hey, did would you use it if we have it? So, okay. Yeah. yeah. So I knew we had talked about that. that. So we're gathering information for next year's budget to try to decide what we want to do with that. Um, other than that, uh, did you have any questions on the June 30 report that I can answer? Um, is the June 30 report the one we have in our packet? No, that's August. Oh, this is so August. That's this year. Oh, so this okay. This is one that was handed out last La month. Last month. Okay. But I guess we could also, I mean, if you want to take a look at the August one, I can kind of explain what we're trying to um, show in this report. Um, this financial statement was one that I did, that we. Um, came up with when Brent was here and the board because if you wanted you know my financial report is 75 to 100 pages every every month so this was our attempt to try to give you a snapshot of the highlights of salaries benefits by different functions within the school um, the two columns to the left of the report show what was spent the prior year so also prior year to date and then month to date. So the thought process at the time was that way there you can kind of compare and see where we're at mm -hmm. month to month. Um, this August report is a great one to talk about because the spending is quite a bit higher in August of 2024 than it was in 2023. Mm -hmm. um, and Robin, I think what we have in the packet is uh, revenue. We have revenue, right? And it's on the back. No, on the, no, on the that's back tech, is the center. tech center. Oh, I didn't. Really pick oh, I, I don't have the. I didn't look in the pack yet. I think we might not have what you meant us to have. Huh? We have revenue here. You want to see what we? Yeah, have. revenues. Yeah. Revenue is not what it's we do. expenditures. I mean, oh, the, the, it's here. good information. Yeah, the revenue. Right, but the revenues mm -hmm. in August there's hardly any revenue. Right. I can make copies. Give so what are you looking at? Yeah. <laughs> I want to see what, see what you're what looking, looking at. at. <laughs> There's a copy right here. And I can even scan it and share it out. Okay. So both sides of this, Robin? Uh, yes. Yeah. Huh, what do I have with that? Unless it was hundred to have a spreadsheet. What what RTC get? Same thing. Just revenue. Is it RTC? No, it's, no, it's expenditures. expenditures. Mm -hmm. This is what we have on, on the back. What was it last? Okay, time? so you got the expenditures for that uh, for RTC. For RTC. RTC. Service. Well, it should have one for OSSD. Okay. But there well, are three different tabs. Yeah. Well, that would be my question Yeah, Robin, we do have a question um, based okay. on good memory. Yeah, good. so last time we noticed that the, the food service it was substantially high, um, and I can't remember who answered the question, but they said that they were still waiting on some information on that. Was that, does that number still stand? Um, they ended, they did end the year in a deficit, mm -hmm. um, probably, uh, do I have my 
it was around forty forty thousand dollars. So okay. better than what yeah, the initial I think it was in the report 80s was before the last number. Right? Yeah, and so I'll be meeting with Willie too to talk about that. Mm -hmm. It's his first year, um, and uh, one piece that we do need to talk about with him, and part of it is that his staff has taken over cleaning the oh. kitchens, so that cost has come off the custodial budget. Mm -hmm. and now on to food service so mm -hmm. we need to gotcha. take a look at that yeah um so that's probably a good portion mm -hmm. and is that because of staffing numbers yeah they don't have the staff in the custodial yeah okay so i didn't know if um also the cost of food cost and things of like everything. that everything has yeah. gotten doubled I wonder how that, I wonder how cleaning, you know, for a food service worker, how cleaning this the kitchen, original. how much of a dissatisfier, you know, like, does that affect they, job satisfaction? Is that They you know, all, thing? no, seem very happy to do it, which, because yeah. I asked. Okay. I know. Thank you. I thought the same thing, and I said to Willie, is, you know, is you. this something that people Who are... did the kitchen clean before? Who? Who cleaned the kitchen before? Custodial staff. Maybe. Okay. Oh, thank you. Sorry. It's okay. And yeah, so Willie feels awesome. like his people know more about how to what, sanitize, how to clean yep. and sanitize yeah. uh, than the point. That makes sense. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Different, different standards. So, yeah. I do have, I have a question. I mean, I, okay. um, there's so much that I don't know as I look at all of this, but as a special ed person, I'm just curious if the IDEAB on the expenditures, or sorry, on the revenue $20, page, $20, is it zero? Do we not do any early extra class? Do we not do any early childhood special ed here? We do IDAB, but it's a uh, special grant, okay. so it's not budgeted okay. in the general funds. Okay. But Great. yes, we do okay. IDAB preschool and regular okay. IDAB. Thanks. Yeah. What does that stand for? That's the, early, the birth to five uh, special ed classification is IDAB. Okay. And Thank if you, you. Yeah, if you had my summary sheet, too, which... There, the IDAB is listed down okay. here. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So does everybody have the August? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. So, um, so as I was saying, if you were to look at this, um, this August I've spent a total of one point six seven five million dollars, and last August. Wait. Where are you finding? Where last, is the last number? page? I'm at. I'm at the. Total. School total. School okay. total, sorry. One million six seventy four in August of twenty four. So the column over to the right. Mm -hmm. You see one million six seventy four. <laughs> this is a lot of numbers. Okay, right here. Got it. Switching for glasses. Okay. And then if you go over to the left, August of two thousand twenty three. So I do a comparison. I had spent one million one. So, uh, so then you so go, it's just why a way, you know, to visual, so yeah, bit. or call me and say, what happened? Um, but this year, my September 1 payroll was dated August 31st. Uh, September 1 yeah. was a Saturday. Uh -huh. Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, okay yeah. So, so that's why those numbers are there, and it also is a good visual for myself to make sure something isn't really out of whack. Mm -hmm. And also by function, so that if, if I see something you know, come March, that looks like it's going to be way overspending. You know, I can, you can find out what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of how this financial report was designed. Um, I mean, if the board would like to see something different, I'm happy to accommodate, but I just thought I'd explain it a little bit um, to give you some context. Mm -hmm. And then you can check up on me mm. as well. <laughs> I mean, so the, and the revenue sheet's kind of set up the same way. It gives you last year's actuals for the year to date for, for the 23-24 school year, August revenue comparison. Revenue is a little less exciting. Yeah, Not that but much so more. why would, so we have less coming in, but oh, but we're paying more just in August because of that. Because of the payroll. The, the payroll thing. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so you just have to kind of know that and exactly. Back in mind. Well, in in our um, so if we were to get this and you weren't here to explain that, where would we would we see that somewhere in like the sa in the salaries section of the? Yes. So the top line under instruction. Salaries. Right. Last August it was twenty four thousand. It's two hundred and thirty four thousand. So that this would August. Right. Right. So, that, so we would go. Whoa. whoa. Yep. And then if you get out of special ed, those salaries are pretty much double. So all the way down. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so right, that's so two months of pay. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Or a month and a half. A month. Of, well, yeah. It's just. Well, teachers don't get paid in the summer. Right. So I see. Yeah. Yeah. So. It makes sense. Yep. Next year it's gonna look really good. <laughs> Next year. In comparison to twenty twenty four, you mean? Right, because it's unlikely the same thing will happen again. Well it'll be the same. People will get paid on the first instead, not on the thirtieth. Right. Right. So yeah. So her numbers so are gonna look just, great next year. In some months there'll be three pays three instead. Pay and then yeah. it'll yeah. catch the next month it'll catch up because there's one and it averages out. But. So are there other numbers that would be um, in this layout that would be better to look at in terms of just are we on track or not? Um Salary and benefits obviously are the biggest. That's like eighty percent of my of the of right. budget. Yeah. Um, I mean, su supplies. Supplies is a pretty good number to look at. Again, it depends on. So this. So last August, we obviously got a lot more supplies and stuff in in comparison to this August. Um, but I also so the encumbrance column. I probably should have mentioned that after the August of 2024 is how much money tell um, me where we are though <laughs> so any encumbrance okay encumbrance, there we go um, those are purchase orders or um, orders that people have placed that haven't been received yet so that's also a really a good way for me to determine where we are um, in spending and we have a pretty robust um, purchase order system um, that and so that really does help us control our expenses thank you anything else thank you anybody yeah, have more mm -hmm. questions yeah from please folks? and if you have any questions you know where I am call me yes. email me happy happy to help thank you thank you Okay. So Robin typically arrives really early in the morning, and if you don't have anything else for her, <laughs> she may scoot right out of here. <laughs> yes, of course. I appreciate you coming, though. I, I Thank you. Think this is very helpful. Here we've had this. Yeah, this yeah, is great. Well, since I've been on the board, I've always glanced at all this and wondered, and wondered understood how it so was. So was that helpful? Yes, it was <laughs> really helpful. Great. We appreciate you. Yeah. So much. Yes. Anytime. Thank you. Um, so moving on, a um, couple of EL reports to talk about. The first one um, is a second read of 2.0 that we um, really had a good discussion about last month. <clears throat> so we're going to consider this a second read. I italicized and possible vote to approve because if we don't want to move on to a vote because we're still kind of figuring out how we're doing this this year, that's fine. Um, so just that first page is what I'm talking about, 2.0. Um, does any, My, Michael, do you want to say anything about it? So we appreciated last time the, the discussion that we had, mm -hmm. and then let me put the evidence in so you didn't have the evidence last time. Mm -hmm. Now you have the evidence of 60 some odd days of compliance with <laughs> global good grades. Uh, you know, I think I'm going to be learning a lot over the over the next year. I expect this report and the evidence for this report could be much more robust. In fact, I think that this report 
the global constraints probably reflects all of the other reports. It's interesting to me that this report probably is the, when, we, when you think about how things go, this report is actually, in some ways, we talked a little bit about it, the last report. Yeah. Although for me, it felt like the first. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. Does anyone feel like we need to discuss more just for this particular policy? Something else we'd like to see? Well, I, I did a little more, and I actually dug out, and I didn't do it until today, so I, the last minute, I, I did um, uh, scan it and email it to everybody, but probably no one was able to look at it yet. But I was looking back at some stuff that um, one of the other board members from a long time ago, and I forget when, but um, I found this thing in a folder. I'm cleaning out my house. <laughs> I found this folder of stuff, and there was a, a thing that I had gotten a copy of from one of the other board members who had done a monitoring training on with policy governance. So. I, so then I was like, oh, I'm going to read this. So I read it, and then I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> ah, that's what might be missing. So in this, it, when I was reading through it, so this is out of a, uh, it was a photocopied out of a book called Meaningful Monitoring by Janice Moore. And um, in it, so in the interpretation, one of the things that it says that you need to have in there is uh, the interpretation is supposed to include what would demonstrate compliance. And if we look at what we've got here, there's nothing that says this is going to demonstrate compliance before you then provide the evidence that shows the compliance. So um, anyway, um, since we're starting anew, I, I'm thinking, you know, there's no rush. Um, maybe we want to take a look at it again and with that information and, and just think about what, what might be in there. And I would, again, as I was looking at it in preparation of the meeting, <laughs> I was like, this has got to be super hard because, as he just pointed out, so uh, when you, because this is like that big, big, sort of widest policy, and then all the, the ones underneath it sort of um, fit kind of under it, but because those are already there. Um, if we were monitoring and we started with the ones below it before we hit the top one, then it allows him to have a better idea of, okay, what hasn't already been interpreted and, and shown in order to show compliance. So anyway. Um, I'm having trouble understanding, and maybe I'm just being daft. But... <laughs> It, so you're saying what's missing is explaining how one would show compliance? Yes. So the part so of what, the... What, the uh, but he is showing how one would be compliant if he's saying he's compliant. Right. So I'll, I'll read from... from uh, from this, from, I'll just read one little bit. So, a reasonable interpret. So, this is uh, what I had sent to everyone. Uh, look for two things in a monitoring report. One, a reasonable interpretation of the policy. The superintendent should provide an explicit interpretation of the board's policy statement, including what measurable data will demonstrate compliance and and rationale to support why this interpretation is reasonable. <clears throat> so when I looked at this, I was like, he's explaining what it means, but he hasn't 
yet said what will demonstrate compliance. It's hard to give yet. evidence for something that, that doesn't exist, right? Like, it's hard for him to say I'm compliant with this because there's no evidence of this. And that is okay. So in this, so they I give it the law. in there, this. No law is broken, so there's no evidence. <laughs> right. So in this, uh, I'll give you. This is just in a, a sample that uh, they give in this in this um, in this book. So compliance will be demonstrated when an external review of at least two departments annually identifies no material issues related to imprudent practices, illegal actions, or behavior inconsistent with business and professional ethics. The external auditor does not question the prudence, ethics, or lawfulness of financial practices. We haven't had the audit, audit yet. That usually comes at the end. Um, there are no substantiated claims by either staff or consumers of human rights abuses, unethical actions or activities, or violation of occupational safety regulations. There is a policy in place that permits employees to report unethical practices to an anonymous third party without fear of retribution. There have been no fines or successful right, lawsuits. Point, yeah. So, so you can so those are what's going to demonstrate compliance, and then and then the evidence is. But I think Again, you're saying I think, I think that's done here, and and I think. One of the, um, I feel like, cruxes that we get to a lot is that we get so bogged down in format and um, uh, making sure that everything fits a script that we don't actually, um, that's not going to make me and just me, uh, approve or not approve. It, so what, so, so, what, so I think if I'm, if I'm understanding what's missing in your view, and tell me if I'm wrong, please, mm -hmm. is you want him to state in his interpretation to be in compliance there will be no complaints filed with the, with the Vermont Agency of Education. There will be no complaints filed under board policy B27 that have been, that advance to the board level or something of that sort, because that's his evidence. Yeah. Or, so you want him to say, uh, to be in compliance, you will not see these, these things. Right. Right. Is that okay? But yeah. that's being said. It is. Just, but just, as, a, just as, as, as evidence instead of as... as, as so, so that, this, a, this is this is, no, is my this is not this though. is not this is not a bad discussion. This is not a bad discussion. This no. is this is this is educational for Michael, and it's helping us figure out how we're going to do this. Mm -hmm. So, so you want but I don't but I don't think that we, for crying out loud, I don't think we don't accept this today because <laughs> we do have to like move on with our work. Also, like right, this is a hard thing to do without without more than 60 well, days under your belt, right? Like, right. this will be revisited in a year, or any time between now and a year from now that we want to revisit it, we can revisit this. Right. This is good enough for now for me. I move mm -hmm. that we approve this policy 2.0 global restraints as okay. submitted. I second. Uh, further discussion. Further discussion. I, I will, I, I think we should accept it. I think we should, we should at the after we've been through all the other lower policies, come back and revisit this one, because then it will help us know what we don't have in here. Yeah. Because it's hard. It's hard to know, and I I don't know. So I I kept thinking. So what? You know what really. And in the example when I was reading, because this stuff is, it, it, 
It seems to me that in the past, part of the problem with the monitoring has been it hasn't been specific enough. So people have been concerned that, oh my gosh, something is happening and we don't know about it. So then I was looking at, okay, so how do you set up, uh, one, a monitoring process that is showing compliance and in enough detail that we don't spend hours and hours on monitoring. And so if we can get it set up and be comfortable with it, then we can spend more of our time on the bigger picture stuff of where are we going, how are our kids doing, and are we um, getting the results and moving in the right direction as a system. So that that was kind of where I was to start with. Yeah. Yes, um, so this is super hard. Yeah, I, they all will be for how early it is. Um, this one's especially wonky to start with. So I agree that, and and uh, even before we go through all of them, like Rachel said, we can go back to this one. I would request just as another point, um, your evidence references board policy B twenty seven. If you can just name what that policy is, um, like just the title of that policy when you present it, because yeah, it's public complaints about personnel. Okay, thank you. But. Sure. I do have a motion and a second on the table. I'm going to call one more time for further discussion. Great. All those in favor of accepting uh, the mon EL monitoring report for policy 2.0 global constraints, please raise your hand and audibly say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. It passes unanimously. So we have a beefier one. <laughs> Meteor. Do you, first of all, I want to thank you, Michael, for the amount of work that clearly went into this beefier one. Um, do you want to start with talking about it? Do you want us to launch into thoughts we had? Well, let me give you an overview. Let me give you an yeah. overview of what I what I looked at there. Great. So, um, I looked at the preamble and spent a lot of time with the I spent a lot of time with the preamble and what's going on with that, what the interpretation, what the rationale. Notice again, I didn't put evidence in because uh, it doesn't make sense to put evidence in to me yet until I know that I'm on the same page with, mm -hmm. with you. Um, I do kind of like a little bit, I understand what Anne's saying here, and I certainly have in my head, as I was looking at the rationale, I could have put these are the kinds of things that I will be collecting mm -hmm. in order to show you that I did this. So I'm thinking that way ahead of time, right? I'm, mm -hmm. I'm proactively knowing, okay, in order to, to say I did these things or we did these things or we didn't do these things, because I think it's probably just as important to say I'm not in compliance with this, or we're not in compliance. I mean, on day 75, uh, if we're not in compliance for an ADA thing or something like that, that's the whole system, because it's not just me I'm reporting on, I'm reporting on the whole system. Yeah. So, uh, then what I did when I got into each of the, each of the provisions is I looked at Lane's interpretation last year of what his, what the, those interpretations should look really familiar to you. They are essentially with the exception of one, I think, basically the interpretations that he had. Now the rationale got a whole lot, I went a whole lot deeper in the rationale areas as to why this was important. Mm -hmm. And so that was the piece, I, so to me that's the piece that, that I think is important. Why, why do we care about these things? Why do, why do I think you, why do I think you put these limitations into place? And that's what helps to me have us be on the same page, right? Because if, if I'm coming up with an interpretation for a reason that, that 
you don't care what our, like you saw in here a couple times, the reputation of the organization is an important piece. If that's not important, then it would be helpful to know, right? So, mm -hmm. so this one was a lot, this one absolutely was a lot, a lot beefier. Um, I do think that the other piece that goes into this is it's the elite. This is a, it's pretty significant. So that the time to interpret to go through, uh, Jeannie and I had it's fun, it's fun to listen to you talk because I did run the first one through Jeannie before I put it in this packet, and a couple little couple little typo the kind of things you know, and you'll notice that I never went back and covered evidence for unlawful. So next year. I'll be giving you for sure evidence for how I was not unlawful, right? That, that came back late. Uh, Jeannie hasn't looked at this one yet. I wanted you to look at it before she gave me feedback. And, um, you know, I, like I said, I'm really, I'm really into the, the rationale piece of the, the piece of the puzzle to me. It's, it's the why are these things important. So it's a little bit making sure I understand what's important to you Language seems plain enough, but why is it important to you? Or why is it important? Yes, and I guess that's the other thing. See, I'm still in my old board mentality of trying to interpret what the board is trying to tell me. And the difference between the way that I've operated for nine years with boards is, and you, is your language is supposed to just tell me. It's supposed to be plain. I'm still playing the guessing game of, why do they want this? What's going on here? What am I trying to do? So, it's part of this is is me adapting to a new to a new model, mm -hmm. right? But that that's where I am at the moment, and I think the further I'm trained into this, and the more I do with it, the more I'm just going to accept that the work that you did developing these limitations that you really spent the time that you wanted to spend and the limitations are what you want them to be. So I, I think what I think I'm coming up with is as much work as this is on my end, when you're really cranking with it, it's going to be work on your end too because you're going to have to go, if, I, if we don't sit here and do it the way that we're doing it to make the interpretations and the rationales to have the conversation like this, then what you have to do is you have to change the, the limitations and get more specific in order to get the outcomes that you want. I think the last thing I'll say about that is, so I think one of my strengths is on the relationship side of things. And so I always prefer to have it as a conversation as opposed to a written dialogue back in back and forth, uh, you know, I've never been a, it's interesting because I don't look at myself as a particularly strong writer. Uh, and so whatever, whenever you see something from me, you can almost be assured that I've written something and then I've run it through some other mechanism to help me, help me be stronger and and whatnot, and so you'll see at the end of this is that I wrote co-authored with ChatGPT, mm -hmm. right? So <laughs> this was multiple multiple versions back and forth. It's not using an AI bot isn't like, hey, write my monitoring report for me. It's here are some thoughts that I have, what back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, and it was it was neat because I have another version of this where I took this. And I said, turn this into a professional school policy ends monitor or, uh, uh, limitations monitoring report, and it's about five page sh five pages shorter. And I didn't like it. <laughs> right? I looked at it and I said, man, they're not getting my rationale here. And isn't the rationale important? So, so I don't know. That's. This did it is, give compliance funny. standards when did, you did the chat GTB one? Did it, did it give a compliance standard? 
Uh, no, what it did it was it, it hmm. so what it I had to put in, so what happens, and I lost my bot, so I oh. spent about three hours working with the same bot, and it was going back and forth, and somehow I shut it off oh. while I was on oh. the last, the tone of this might change because it was on the last three, I suddenly had a different bot, and so if you know about AI, and you're working back and forth with something, it will learn from what you've already put in about what you like, what you don't like, and so it, it kind of moves. It kind of moves along. Um, so no, it doesn't. It, it doesn't like just spit out. Here's a right. You have to input the information in in order for it to. But I wondered because you told it to do a an EL monitoring report if it tried to figure out what would be the compliance yeah, things. It did not. It so did then, not. And I did one more thing just for fun. It was it was a little bit late last night, but I said, now write it in John Carver's voice. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought it could be, you know, it, it could be interesting to say, hey, Lord, here you go. Here's here's what John Carver mm -hmm. would, would say. Did you do this. it? You didn't do that. I did. Oh, you did. Yeah, but you I've didn't got, send I've it got to us. Printed copies of this sitting sitting back in the office. <laughs> what I'm sitting here thinking about is how would John? What I what I might do next is go back and say after you all talk about this, how would John Carver evaluate this? Ah, right. I hadn't thought about that last right. night. Right. Oh, as I was yeah. It that off. I've been messing around with Chat GTP. That's why I'm asking you questions because yeah. it's really fun. Actually, I've been. I've been having some fun with well, it's interesting because for, <laughs> for me, um, you know, as a, as a kid, I was diagnosed with a nonverbal learning disability, which means that if you get something that I write, if you ask me to write something by hand and it's a three syllable word, there's a really good chance that it's not going to be spelled right. Right? Or uh, Heather stood over my shoulder while I type and it's painful for her. No, it was right. fine. But I just it was like, you know how on Google you can share a document? I just go and fix behind him. Right? <laughs> so there's a lot of that editing, those editing kind of things. And you know, I get kind of excited about it. When I when I first started as a teacher, I tried to hide it. I I, re, I wrote my notes before I was going to write on a board mm -hmm. in front of kids because I didn't want to misspell something on the board while I was talking talking to kids and whatnot. And then somewhere along the line, I just let, I just realized, hey, wait, there's these tools, mm -hmm. there's these things that help. Why not just say to people, I'm terrible at this. This is, if you ask me to write by hand, you will never, ever get something written by hand from me. I'm sure maybe two sentences, <laughs> right? And even the emails. Most of the time, I tell people, call me, mm -hmm. right? So, so this is, Oops. It, it's interesting to go through and to use the different tools that, that are available and to try to figure out what's, what's, what makes sense, what doesn't make sense. Well, one thing I, and I just want to acknowledge and that I'm struck by is that all of the executive limitations are inherently negative, right? What not to do. Yep. Um, shall not, shall not, shall not. And the words in your rationale, what I like about it is that they, you've used all forward, positive, promotes, build, um, not just, you know, going through circling, <coughs> promotion of. It, so I appreciate that it's not, well, I don't do this and don't do this and don't do this. And it's still that kind of, I'm held by this. No, this is what I do. Because I'm held by this, mm -hmm. this is how I'll move forward. Mm -hmm. Kind of a woo-woo thing, but I was struck by it. Thoughts? Has what Michael's presented here um, thinking about our conversation last month, is this providing uh, the specifics that we're looking for? 
And I mean that I, I mean that to be vague because I think at this point we're talking about how this process works and not necessarily the the meat. Ask your question again. Oh, please, I don't sorry. Know if I <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to know if we're, we're kind of moving in the right direction, using the conversation from last month mm -hmm. to get at what we want. Not necessarily would you accept this as is, mm -hmm. but is how he went about it and how he's presenting it what we're looking for. So, and in my mind, last month, one of the things you really talked about was what is the impact. And you should see impact all the way through this. Right? That I really spent a lot of time, what is the impact of not doing those things? Mm -hmm. And that's where the positivity comes in. Mm -hmm. Are you looking for a clear data collection statement in the rationale? Yeah, I, I think, so. I th <laughs> unfortunately, I, 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 and I'm sorry. <laughs> and Jeannie will be much, because she's gone through this training with Susan, but this is a, it's a lot of effort and it's a lot of thought, and it's all good thought. Yep. The next phase is, so how are you gonna show compliance? Yes. And, and the, the rationale is more related to why is this compliance uh, indicator, why is that the a good indicator that this is happening. Do you follow me? I I understand what you're saying. Um, and I so the yes. I'm just going to leave it at that. Why don't I leave it at yes for right this minute? Because I, and, and it is good to think through, and I think for the board to have kind of the rationale behind it, but again, it's um, uh, thinking about, and I don't, again, I don't, not so a, may I offer a potential example? So for provision three, would it mm -hmm. be satisfactory if there was an assessment of spaces that are, have accessibility compliant with ADA and to those that do not? Like if that was a data collection, a clear statement of this is the data that will be collected and reported, and then a report on spaces that are ADA accessible. That aren't? That are and are not. Right, because you may, you may be out of compliance with some, or you're looking at what are the ADA regulations. I'm trying to get an exemplar. Like, you know how when you tell yeah. students you want this thing, and then you give them, like, this is an exemplar. So I, I, right. I'm just asking, would that be an example that would be? I think the key piece to me is when you, I would challenge you to go back and look at what you accepted last year. Mm and to see if that meets the measure of what you're looking for right now. And I would say it does not, mm. right? I, I would say that when you look at the things from last year, uh, I don't know that there was a lot of impact. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the measures were not necessarily identified ahead of time. No. In the things that we, we, looked, at, we looked at last year. So those are certainly things I can plug into this and as we work as we work forward and then i'll come back again is what's happening is in a typical year you're able to you once you built this the first time the second time through it's easier the third time through it's it's better and it gets more robust and and whatnot i i don't expect for a minute that we're going to get through all of these with perfection mm. this year yeah. and so so I think that's important in understanding what people are moving, what people are moving towards. Uh, does does make sense? I also think that yes, it's really likely that under under meeting all ADA current ADA codes, 
uh, that I'm going to report not compliance. Mm -hmm. And I can say that after 70 something days. It's the first place that I can that I can do. And that probably doesn't surprise you because you know that uh, the building, you've heard what's going on with some of the some of the buildings in our in our district. So. And there's nothing wrong with being out of compliance. It no. can be a yeah, we're out of compliance here, we know and we're working on it and and you know, depending on funding and sometimes you get waivers on, on ADA compliance. Okay. And here's, um, what we're gonna, here's what we're going to do. I mean, I think that's what you mm -hmm. think, that's, that's what you that's what you look at there. This is an out of compliance in this thing, and this is this is why, and this is what we're going to do. And this is the time when I'll be able to come back and report to you that I expect this is what I expect will be back in compliance. Right. And I think that's what I think that's what these are designed to really do. It's designed mm -hmm. for you to really look at your practice and to be able to come back and say here's what I, I if we were doing this ideally here's what we would get if we're not this is where we're at this is what we've got to do what we're going to do yeah. Yeah. other thoughts for, for Michael? again a first read this is really wordy it seems like you could boil the rationale of provision three down to it's the law and it's the right thing to do for people period the end that's why we that's why it's a provision that we need to comply with for example this looks like this looks like a lot of a lot of time writing report. And that's time away from doing other important things. say one more time I'll allow one more thought and then we're gonna move on Does anyone else have a thought then just think it I have just one question are you so next you're gonna have Jeannie look at this <clears throat> with you next I'm gonna have Jeannie look and then I'm gonna and then you'll re then I'm gonna start having Jeannie look at it ahead of time in the in the in the um, are there no resources in your office on writing, I swear Brent had maybe he took them with him, uh, but some some resources on how to write monitoring reports, because you know, the little the little book, you know, the getting started with policy governance doesn't. That was very vague. That's why I was like, oh, I have this folder, and that's where I pulled out the information that I had on monitoring out of a file that I had in my I think this is part of why office. I'm tapping G because I'm, yeah. I'm sitting there saying okay I've taken two steps at this with the resources that I have available at the moment that I know I have available at the moment and you know it, it, it would be nice to have more resource in order to do this so that it is not that incredible length of time that you know and it's also important to figure out what are people looking for mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's the key yeah. right yeah but we're, we're calibrating I'm, what I'm doing what we're doing together right now I feel like is calibrating and what I just heard and I didn't hear anybody argue with it was I should have brought the I should have brought the five pages shorter version of mm -hmm. it and <clears throat> had you look at that and say hey what do you think? Because it does have to, it's exactly, Rachel, that shorter version, it is telling you exactly where it cut and it took the language out of it 
and bullet pointed uh, the different the different rationale pieces. And so, you know, it would be it would have been fun to send you to send you both copies and have you kind of look at it. And, you know, I was looking at them back and forth and saying, this isn't this is more my language. The five page shorter isn't more my lang isn't my, my language so much, but. It probably, with the feedback from here, people would look at that and say, this is really good. Yeah. So the, <clears throat> these policies originate from the board, right? But I imagine that there's a lot of, there are many parallel policies in other districts. And I wonder if there's some, somewhere where they're compiled where there, if it's an issue of figuring out how to write these well, there might be some good examples out there if they're publicly available. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know if there's somewhere where the state <laughs> puts, if, I, I don't know how that would be organized, but. And do you remember you were, so these you were are, on the board when these were adopted originally? Yeah, so the, we, our board uses um, John and Miriam Carver's policy governance model. It's a very specific. So um, you, if you look at policy governance districts, you'll find that many of the policies even, they almost, they're, they're almost identical. But do you mean um, the monitoring reports? But then the monitoring reports, and last time, did I send you a couple? I sent you a couple. I sent you uh, Winooski's yep. um, because uh, Wilmer is fairly new to policy governance, and he's like gone in, you know, with two feet, uh, you know, and really. And then um, I think I sent you one from Burlington High School. Yeah. And South Burlington. And and maybe so. Yeah, yeah. So there are other ones to take a look at. Plus, he has all of the monitoring reports from the previous superintendent. But I can tell you, my alter, my alter, or ulterior motive is to improve our board's understanding of monitoring and understanding how to evaluate a monitoring report. Because I think some of the issues that we had in the past, if we had had a better understanding of how to monitor, some things might have come to light sooner. Um, that's, that's just my, my opinion. Um, and that's why I'm being a bit of a stickler with is this really, because I'm not seeing a compliance standard. And one of the, I, I even looked back, so we have in our monitoring superintendent performance, in our own policy, we have uh, the board will acquire monitoring information by one, of, one or more of the three um, ways, but one of the things it says um, was that the monitoring information, uh, of course now I've got to read through it again, sorry. So as um, Anne's reading through and catching her spot here, this is the other interesting piece, right? As somebody who's brand new to the policies of Orange Southwest, understanding and knowing how am I going to be compliant with each of these? How are these interacting and interplaying? That's the other thing that's happening right now, is as a superintendent, I'm learning how they navigate versus what Anne's advantage is at the moment, is she already knows, wait, Michael, you're going to be able to take this, this, and this, and use the same evidence to demonstrate these different, these different places, because she's got a much better grasp of the different policies, or the limitations, and the, and the whatnot. So, so this is this is one of our. Um, this is in the board management de delegation. So this is one of the ways the board is. So by internal report in which the superintendent discloses measurable interpretations, including a rationale and compliance information to the board. So, so that's sort of saying, and then I thought in here somewhere, at, somewhere in here it also says without, you know, too much information. So Rachel's, you know, uh, having 
a, a monitoring report should be fairly quick for us to kind of look through and you know what is the compliance standard okay what and and be able to move on pretty quickly our time our board time should be more spent toward looking into the future are we headed in the right direction how are we doing on those ends not just constantly looking back but until i think the board feels comfortable in the monitoring process it's going to be hard for the board to just sort of relax and then move forward on those other things that again that's just my personal opinion but the figuring out what we're asking for what we're looking for is the crux and it needs to be fairly straightforward because there's mm -hmm. turnover in the board and people are not going to spend hours and hours and, and weekends and in training for policy governance it needs to be something people can pick up and, mm -hmm. and run with so right so it needs to be pretty like we need to know what we're asking for and take a look at it and he needs to know what we're asking for he can't write a report that's effective and he's wasting his time and, right. and that's that's bad for all of us right it's bad for our whole community if he's wasting his time instead of shepherding the district in the way it needs to go so we need to be clear about what we're asking for and i think that's the crux we haven't been mm -hmm. i have no solutions just <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, just problems. I'm just problems. <laughs> I'm going to call this discussion. Um, and this, again, is a first read. We may go into a sixth read. You know, hopefully not. But again, this is, this is a learning process. And um, yes, I'm going to call it. I'm just calling yeah, it. Yeah. I'm not going to say anything eloquent about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, first read of the revised ends policy, which is a little more complete than what was in our packet last time. Um, so I'm going to open this up and I'm going to be even more bossy about the time we take. Go. I think we I think there's work to be done on this still. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't think we should be calling this a first read like we're going to approve, approve it soon. That's my comment on it. Great. So then I will say uh, the ENDS committee will meet, subcommittee will be meeting and presenting another revision for a first read. People comfortable with that? Yes. Okay. Feel free to contact your ENDS committee, subcommittee members. Who is our, who's the chair? There's no chair. There's there is no chair. No, I, I run the meetings there and I think between the two of you, minutes are taken. So, so are we just ad hocing, or how are we going to set up a meeting? Is somebody going to take that on? Or? Do you want to connect at the end of this meeting, and we can pick a time? Sure. Mm -hmm. Great. That was good. Thank you. Security cameras recommended F twenty six. First read with OSSD particulars. Anyone? Comments? Questions? Heather or Michael, do you have anything? I only want to point out that there's several things in here that we will need to make sure um, are, are um, monitored. But other than that, I have no other comments. I've already highlighted the things that I need to tell us, um, buildings and grounds. Great. Signage, that sort of thing. Where are logs kept? Like exactly. Number 10. I highlighted that one. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> so depending on the system, they're kept right in the system. So yes, the Vercotta the cameras that we use, uh -huh. the log is right there, and any time someone accesses something in it, does it live up there? It lives in the cloud. Like if the system yeah. crashes, it lives in the cloud. Lives in the cloud. Great. But it would miss the physical. There are a few things it would miss. For example, like if someone's standing with me, and I'm mm -hmm. uh, right, and that person is with me. Mm -hmm. okay. So we would need to, to be truly compliant. We would want to record that as well. Or I would set a procedure that says you can't do that. There you go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Great. So maybe in our second read, you could just mention if you've had those conversations, you could bring that back next time for our second read. I think probably what Heather's catching there is what we need to develop within procedure. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yep. Gotcha. Okay. Thank but we'd you. be happy to share that with you. But it wouldn't necessarily that's right shift anything here. Great. All right, I'm going to move. And you'd be yeah. constrained by limitations in the policies. Mm -hmm. Yep. Or your procedures. Sorry, procedures. Go ahead. Sorry, Anna. Yeah. Great. Okay. We're going to move on. We've got two self evaluations to do. However, the, you know, they look needy and they're not because they're what we should be doing, people. These are our jobs. All right. We're going to hire, we're going to negotiate a contract and set compensation for the superintendent. Done. Great. Did well, it. We've all the time. Done all the Any time. Did it. Done that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, it, it, there's a lot about ownership linkage seeking input and educating owners on, on issues. I will say that one, 1.2, I guess you call it, you know, reporting out to, I think it's something we're working on. We did a couple mm -hmm. of letters last year. I think it's something that Sam and Ryan um, can kind of bring more proposals to us. I think those letters, I'd like to see them continue um, Rachel, these are letters we sent to the community just saying, hey, this is what we're working on, this is what we're focusing on. I think we did two last year. Um, I don't, what does ownership linkage mean? Um, <laughs> policy governance. Um, our owners, our ownership are the folks we, I want to say serve, yeah, answer to. Yeah. Survey. Okay. So the community, mm -hmm. the, the community, the students, the parents, okay. stakeholders. Okay. But not just students and, and then like not just to, no that is just going to taxpayers. Okay. Um staff. I think uh, one of the one of the um, big issues that's going to, that could impact our organization is our budget, especially with all the attention that school budgets got last year. And so Lane did a lot of work to message why our budget needed to be what it was, and and I think um, it would be an important thing to continue um, and to join Michael in as he messages as he messages our our budget decisions ahead of the votes. Like that's probably the, one of the bigger things that we need to do is explain why we need the things we need to the community and what the impact is on taxes. Mm -hmm be more present and do that alongside. before before we have a budget that doesn't pass yep uh, this is everything we should be doing this one okay I'm be familiar with all required policies. You know, uh, uh, determine the expenditure of, of surplus funds. This is an outline of our role. Other things we need to work on? It's what we should be doing. I'm not saying we're doing it all, I and mean, we're doing it all spectacularly. <clears throat> frequently or have we ever done public policy advocacy? No. Not that I know of. Mm -hmm. Just curious. That's something you want to do. I'm not saying yes to that at this hour of the day. <laughs> <laughs> I asked her if it's something she wanted to look into okay. a champion. Mm -hmm. You all haven't met at all with the legislature. No, we have. We have. We have the. We presents. do. We do meet with the legislate the Your in legislature. March, March, February. Yeah. Is there an example of public policy advocacy? Because before it's before the new vote. The new vote. Okay. Yeah. I think it's actually on the calendar for December because I was like, oh, what do we do for? Mm. 
But I would read it on my iPad. Once a year, the legislators, we invite the legislators, they come. So. Right. We talk to them about why they should do it's certain things or should not okay. do certain things. We mostly right. receive information rather than. Mm -hmm. We plan um, the meeting with legislators. Well, we ask strategic questions that make them question their life decisions. <laughs> <laughs> like last meeting so was session. all about the act. Yes. 147, 127, whatever that horrible thing is. Yes. It, so we meet with them mid-session, I guess was my question. Right. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. And then the VSBA also kind of gives you an idea, you know, the you're getting those emails, emails mm -hmm. almost weekly. They usually give you an update on, you know, sort of what's... Impacting education. Yeah. 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 So that's where, if there's a particular thing. And oftentimes we rely on our administration to say, oh my gosh, this is coming down the pike. This is the impact it's going to have on our district. What do you guys think about this? And, or, you know, we might want to say something. <laughs> or at least to let legislators understand the impact. Um, so I think, we, I think we can do that. I heard an inhale. Who was about to say something? <laughs> oh, you were. It was there. Um. Yeah, I mean, in terms of a, of a board voice, I don't think we do a ton of advocacy on the legislative agenda in terms of public education. Uh, I think inherently every every one of us has got our opinions and skin in the game there. Uh, but that, I don't know, it's the same with uh, you know, the PR around um, advocating for budgets, it's like, all right, is that operational or is that board level? Um, hmm. And, you know, how do we ever get consensus as a board on what we believe the solutions in future of the Ed Fund and what's going on there? I, I, I would say we don't do that and maybe we shouldn't be doing that or maybe we should be doing that. I, um, I'm vague on that. I mean, I'm obviously quite close to it, uh, given my relationship with my brother, but, um, I don't speak on behalf of OSSD's board. It seems like that's a, a great thing to do if you have uh, all your other ducks in a row. Mm -hmm. And you're able to think. Yeah, I would say some kind of districts do do this. Like when we, when uh, SBA was sending around emails, sign on to these letters or whatever. Um, I think there were school boards that were doing that. Um, we didn't really engage on on that type of policy as a as a board as a board group we didn't yeah individuals may okay okay but i like to maybe it doesn't have like do we have to be doing that i don't know do we do we need a Subcommittee. You might be headed into a time in education in Vermont where you're going to find yourself as a board needing to be more moving public policy and having more points of view. If, if the uh, subcommittee of the future of public education comes out and is looking for feedback or is starting to move in a direction that you don't believe in that the, the mission and the vision that you adopt isn't supported. You're going to want to you're going to want to be vocal mm -hmm. at that point as a board because 
I would anticipate that that, that subcommittee, or that, that, that work that they're doing, is going to be very important work. And I think that they're headed towards a spot where status quo is not going to, Vermont is not going to be status quo in the next five years. I think even less than that. But So maybe we're going to need a subcommittee of mm -hmm. our board to look at public, public policy and legislative policy. Great. More to come. More to come. Definitely. Yeah. Um, 4.3 agenda planning. Both annual and monthly. Any thoughts about what we're not doing well? So those are usually more productive conversations to have. I mean, it ties in with the, the end of the whole lot. Right? The agenda should be working towards it always. And always remember board members can, and the public actually can request something be put on a monthly agenda. Um, just got to be five days before the agenda goes out. Okay, great. No one's having a giant thought about agendas. I think that that's fine. It's a good sign. It's a good mm -hmm. sign. We're doing well. <clears throat> um, do, do, do. Ah, okay, consent agenda. Um, there are three things here I'd like to propose that we hit on each one. Well, we don't have to, to have a long uh, conversation. Michael, talk to us about the uh, side agreement, please. In your packet, uh, you have a side agreement. The reason for that side agreement is we are not able to hire uh, speech language folks and so we need to contract uh, with an outside agency to provide that those services to meet the requirements that are in our students IEPs. Uh, our contract as written says we'll hire SLPs and so we have to work with the association to come up with a side letter to let us not necessarily have to hire an instead contract. So we talked with the association. This is language they proposed. It's been reviewed, it's supportive of this language. It's language very similar to other language that Pietro has reviewed for me in other districts and uh, would ask that you support us entering into this side agreement because you are the entity that, you're, you are the ones that sign off on the contracts. And, letters with our associations. This is only for the middle and high school? This is the, this is where I think where they're going to get placed, yeah. Okay. So basically, if anyone has issues with any of the language, bring them up, but not to force anyone's vote, but we got to do it. Um, we have to <laughs> provide these services, so... I'll make a motion to the whole consent agenda. Well, uh, we can do it as a full. Do you want to do it as a package? You actually have to vote to take it out according to your 4.34. vote to take it out? If you want to take something out of the consent agenda, oh. you have to actually vote to take it out. Oh. It's on your... I don't think anyone wants to take it out, but okay. sometimes we do separate, like we combine it. Yeah, do it all as one schmabang or... Okay. 
What Heather's sharing with you is that a consent agenda, you adopt the consent agenda. If you, it's if always as one. Well, yeah. Unless you vote it out of the piece out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. So does anyone have any changes to the minutes from August 14th? Okay. New hires are in here, right? They were mm -hmm. in. Yep. Good. Okay. Now I'm going to ask you for that motion. Okay, so it's. Oh, where am I? Just okay. the I make a motion to um, approve the consent agenda. I'll second it. Okay. Seconded by Anne. Thank you. Further discussion? All those in favor, hands and voices? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions passes unanimously. All right, superintendent's report. We have a robust written superintendent's report in the packet. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. In addition, I would share with you that I sent the board a separate communication on Monday afternoon outlining what had happened on Monday morning here with a with a bomb threat, and I will ask the Kyle to include that letter, which was just the community letter. The community has already seen it. I just made sure that each board member received it. We'll put that. We'll put that in the minutes as well with my report. But happy to talk about anything that's in the report that you'd like to talk about. I don't think yay for after school programming getting all licensed and yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. we're excited. Yay. It starts on Monday. Yay! Thank goodness. <laughs> That's just me. Okay. Well, I shared with Michael, I just want to uh, quickly share that I was stopped by a couple of staff members who mentioned that the energy this year. Um, mm -hmm for the start of the year has been really positive and that they were really excited. So feeling really good about the year. Yes. I'll just put that out there. It has nothing to do with it. Uh, Parent Square. Heather, do you want to talk a little bit about it? Sure. I have a two-minute video. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, which I am going to share if I can present. Let me see if I can. Let's see. I guess i got to turn my camera back on. And... What do you click here? The present now. And go share. And there it is. Two minute video. And click play. Oh, it won't have volume. Ugh, I had this issue last night in my class. It was terrible. No, I have volume, but no, I have like it. it would it was to play for people outside. Here's outside. the thing. Um, I think if I turn my volume on, it's going to echo, right? Yep. yep. And I it's going to be horrible. And it's going to be painful. And no there's one's... something where are you sharing through Zoom? Yeah. Or is it there's a setting? <laughs> IT person should It's Google Meet, is it? Oh, it's Google Meet. It's Google Meet. There's something where it's like play audio. It's like in the sounds. If Try clicking next to the next mm -hmm. to the microphone. Okay. <sighs> okay. There might be something where it's like a checkbox to either like play sound through the computer or not. You know what? I'm just going to talk about it. <laughs> I'm, and I'm going to take less than two minutes to talk about it. <laughs> but um, act it out, if you would. Act it out. <laughs> okay. With a 15-second um, interpretive dance. With a 15-second <laughs> interpretive dance. Okay. I'm just going to be. I'm just going to be really. I'm going to stop sharing. Hold on. And I'm just going to be really human about about this experience. So uh, in the past, we had um, school messenger. And that was how we sent out our robocalls and emails. That platform had no capability for text, which is being highly valued by our younger users, right? Um, and we also paid separately from that. So we paid for Messenger, and we also paid for 
um, S'more to send out our newsletters, which were ADA compliant. And so we've purchased Parent Square, which is those two subscriptions, uh, less money for those two, and it adds text capability. So now we have one platform where we can do a robocall, text, and email, and um, every user can set their preferences. So a user can say, I want to get messages as soon as they're distributed. They can say, I want digest. I want it to come to me once a day, every day at 4 o'clock. Don't bother me otherwise, right, et cetera. And so you as a user can set your preferences the way you want it. And it also creates the opportunity for text correspondence um, with teachers and para, you know, other users without them using their personal phone or device and in such a way that everything is logged and archived. So if there was a discovery, if someone said, I'm accusing this educator of texting me something wrong, that we'd have every bit of it. So we're compelled, all of our educators, to only use that for text or email with students, um, just so that everyone's safer. So basically, for less money, we got a product that's better and more efficient. And so far, the adoption rate is quite high. We've only had it for a few weeks. We're up to 94%. Used it during our bomb threat. Learned a lot because um, I, as a user, only knew how to do the text, and I didn't know how to do the voice robocall. Learned now. Um, and so I think we're going to be doing some more training for our administrators and teachers to increase the use. But we anticipate, as far as being good communicators, that it will improve our communi communication. You say when you have 94% participation, you, do you mean of your educators? No. So when I send out a message, right, through yeah. Parent Square, it gives 94% me. 94% of like parents and children? Yeah, it will give. It up? It will give you an analysis of your your reach. Like I, I'll just show you on my computer really quick. Um, so if I go to um, so so um, this is across the district. This is actually ninety one percent for the whole district. Some schools, like Melinda, was really at open house saying, "Scan this QR code, get on Parent Square." So her numbers are higher, but it, so you get this sort of like information. This is how many of your stakeholders you're reaching. And then you can click on each part of the pie and identify who you're not reaching. And an administrative assistant could reach out to them and say, let me help you. Right? So it's, I anticipate that with a few more weeks, we're going to be um, really confident that we're getting messages out to families. Sorry, I the video my first didn't one work. From a specific teacher, which was really good. I mean, to her whole class. But oh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> that was pretty exciting because yeah. I've gotten administrative ones. but. Right. So, um, like, for example, at Braintree, I saw that Heather Robinson has been doing um, newsletters for her families forever as a PDF. And instead, they came out through Parent Square. And so I hadn't seen one for two years since I haven't been the principal there, and it was so nice to see them again. So I anticipate there'll be a lot of that because um, there's a way to set them so they can be posted, like, on Facebook. So I posted them all last week. Um, to where's the learning? But I think it, overall it's going to be great. So that's my cool. way better than a video, Heather. <laughs> way better. <laughs> so Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> no, I was waiting for the interpreter to dance. Oh. <laughs> um, okay, action item recap. So please check your calendars, 24th and 25th, um, and then register yourselves. Um, for the VSBA conference. Yes. Um, we, so if you could let us know what the VSBA says and what, you know, modules and quizzes and all that good stuff. Um, if you have things to put on the agenda or questions about the agenda, please contact me. There's not a lot of action right now. Oh, subcommittees, please. And we'll stay right here, the four of us. We'll do ours. Um, I think a bunch of groups. I think there's a lot of action items. With that, and no executive session needed for many. Okay. Um, our next meeting is the, what did I say, 14th? No, 9th. 
9th, and it is at Brookfield. Right? Yeah. It's always cold in the Brookfield gym, Rachel. Yes, so. bundle okay. up. <laughs> and bring a pillow. And a blanket. <laughs> <laughs> the pillow's for your bottom. <laughs> wow. Let's talk about getting new chairs there. What's your favorite stuff? Stuff. It's going to be a lot. <laughs> 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 favorite stuff. Oh, all right. Well, uh, 809. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>